Adipose Tissue, Wikipedia Article Audio In biology, adipose tissue, body fat, or simply fat is a loose connective tissue composed mostly of adipocytes. In addition to adipocytes, adipose tissue contains the stromal vascular fraction of cells including preadipocytes, fibroblasts, vascular endothelial cells and a variety of immune cells such as adipose tissue macrophages. Adipose tissue is derived from preadipocytes. Its main role is to store energy in the form of lipids, although it also cushions and insulates the body. Far from being hormonally inert, adipose tissue has, in recent years, been recognized as a major endocrine organ, as it produces hormones such as leptin, estrogen, resistin, and the cytokine TNF-alpha. The two types of adipose tissue are white adipose tissue, which stores energy, and brown adipose tissue, which generates body heat. The formation of adipose tissue appears to be controlled in part by the adipose gene. Adipose tissue more specifically brown adipose tissue was first identified by the Swiss naturalist Conrad Gessner in 1551. In humans, adipose tissue is located beneath the skin, around internal organs, in bone marrow, intermuscular and in the breast tissue. Adipose tissue is found in specific locations, which are referred to as adipose depots. Apart from adipocytes, which comprise the highest percentage of cells within adipose tissue, other cell types are present, collectively termed stromal vascular fraction of cells. SVF includes preadipocytes, fibroblasts, adipose tissue macrophages, and endothelial cells. Adipose tissue contains many small blood vessels. In the integumentary system, which includes the skin, it accumulates in the deepest level, the subcutaneous layer, providing insulation from heat and cold. Around organs, it provides protective padding. However, its main function is to be a reserve of lipids which can be oxidized to meet the energy needs of the body and to protect it from excess glucose by storing triglycerides produced by the liver from sugars, although some evidence suggests that most lipid synthesis from carbohydrates occurs in the adipose tissue itself. Adipose depots in different parts of the body have different biochemical profiles. Under normal conditions, it provides feedback for hunger and diet to the brain. Anatomical Features Mice Mice have eight major adipose depots, four of which are within the abdominal cavity. The paired gonadal depots are attached to the uterus and ovaries in females and the epididymis and testes in males. The paired retroperitoneal depots are found along the dorsal wall of the abdomen surrounding the kidney, and, when massive, extend into the pelvis. The mesenteric depot forms a glue-like web that supports the intestines and the omental depot and, when massive, extends into the ventral abdomen. Both the mesenteric and omental depots incorporate much lymphoid tissue as lymph nodes and milky spots, respectively. The two superficial depots are the paired inguinal depots, which are found anterior to the upper segment of the hind limbs and the subscapular depots, paired medial mixtures of brown adipose tissue adjacent to regions of white adipose tissue, which are found under the skin between the dorsal crests of the scapulae. The layer of brown adipose tissue in this depot is often covered by a frosting of white adipose tissue. Sometimes these two types of fat are hard to distinguish. The inguinal depots enclose the inguinal group of lymph nodes. Minor depots include the pericardial, which surrounds the heart, and the paired popliteal depots, between the major muscles behind the knees, 
each containing one large lymph node. Of all the depots in the mouse, the gonadal depots are the largest and the most easily dissected, comprising about 30% of dissectable fat. In an obese person, excess adipose tissue hanging downward from the abdomen is referred to as a paniculus. A paniculus complicates surgery of the morbidly obese individual. It may remain as a literal apron of skin if a severely obese person quickly loses large amounts of fat. This condition cannot be effectively corrected through diet and exercise alone, as the paniculus consists of adipocytes and other supporting cell types shrunken to their minimum volume and diameter. Reconstructive surgery is one method of treatment. Visceral fat or abdominal fat is located inside the abdominal cavity, packed between the organs. Visceral fat is different from subcutaneous fat underneath the skin, and intramuscular fat interspersed in skeletal muscles. Fat in the lower body, as in thighs and buttocks, is subcutaneous and is not consistently spaced tissue, whereas fat in the abdomen is mostly visceral and semi-fluid. Visceral fat is composed of several adipose depots, including mesenteric, epididymal white adipose tissue, and perirenal depots. Visceral fat is often expressed in terms of its area in CM2. An excess of visceral fat is known as central obesity, or belly fat, in which the abdomen protrudes excessively. New developments such as the body volume index are specifically designed to measure abdominal volume and abdominal fat. Excess visceral fat is also linked to type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, inflammatory diseases, and other obesity-related diseases. Likewise, the accumulation of neck fat has been shown to be associated with mortality. Several studies have suggested that visceral fat can be predicted from simple anthropometric measures, and predicts mortality more accurately than body mass index or waist circumference. Men are more likely to have fat stored in the abdomen due to sex hormone differences. Female sex hormone causes fat to be stored in the buttocks, thighs, and hips in women. When women reach menopause and the estrogen produced by the ovaries declines, fat migrates from the buttocks, hips, and thighs to the waist, later fat is stored in the abdomen. Obesity High-intensity exercise is one way to effectively reduce total abdominal fat. One study suggests at least 10 met hours per week of aerobic exercise is required for visceral fat reduction. Epicardial adipose tissue is a particular form of visceral fat deposited around the heart and found to be a metabolically active organ that generates various bioactive molecules, which might significantly affect cardiac function. Marked component differences have been observed in comparing it with subcutaneous fat, suggesting a depot-specific impact of stored fatty acids on adipocyte function and metabolism. Visceral fat Most of the remaining non-visceral fat is found just below the skin in a region called the hypodermis. This subcutaneous fat is not related to many of the classic obesity-related pathologies, such as heart disease, cancer, and stroke, and some evidence even suggests it might be protective. The typically female pattern of body fat distribution around the hips, thighs, and buttocks is subcutaneous fat, and therefore poses less of a health risk compared to visceral fat. Like all other fat organs, subcutaneous fat is an active part of the endocrine system, secreting the hormones leptin and resistin. The relationship between the subcutaneous adipose layer and total body fat in a person is often modeled by using regression equations. The most popular of these equations was formed by Dernan and Wormer Slay, who rigorously tested many types of skin fold, and, as a result, 
created two formulae to calculate the body density of both men and women. These equations present an inverse correlation between skin folds and body density as the sum of skin folds increases, the body density decreases. Epicardial fat Factors such as sex, age, population size or other variables may make the equations invalid and unusable, and, as of 2012, Dernan and Wormersley's equations remain only estimates of a person's true level of fatness. New formulae are still being created. Subcutaneous fat Marrow fat, also known as marrow adipose tissue, is a poorly understood adipose depot that resides in the bone and is interspersed with hematopoietic cells as well as bony elements. The adipocytes in this depot are derived from mesenchymal stem cells which can give rise to fat cells, bone cells as well as other cell types. The fact that MAD increases in the setting of calorie restriction slash anorexia is a feature that distinguishes this depot from other fat depots. Exercise regulates MAT, decreasing MAT quantity and diminishing the size of marrow adipocytes. The exercise regulation of marrow fat suggests that it bears some physiologic similarity to other white adipose depots. Moreover, increased MAT in obesity further suggests a similarity to white fat depots. Marrow fat Ectopic fat is the storage of triglycerides in tissues other than adipose tissue, that are supposed to contain only small amounts of fat, such as the liver, skeletal muscle, heart, and pancreas. This can interfere with cellular functions and hence organ function and is associated with insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes. It is stored in relatively high amounts around the organs of the abdominal cavity but is not to be confused as visceral fat. The specific cause for the accumulation of ectopic fat is unknown. The cause is likely a combination of genetic, environmental, and behavioral factors that are involved in excess energy intake and decreased physical activity. Substantial weight loss can reduce ectopic fat stores in all organs and this is associated with an improvement of the function of that organ. Ectopic fat In the latter case, non-invasive weight loss interventions like diet or exercise have the ability to decrease ectopic fat in children and adults with overweight or obesity. Free fatty acids are liberated from lipoproteins by lipoprotein lipase and enter the adipocyte, where they are reassembled into triglycerides by esterifying it onto glycerol. Human fat tissue contains about 87% lipids. There is a constant flux of FFA entering and leaving adipose tissue. The net direction of this flux is controlled by insulin and leptin. If insulin is elevated, then there is a net inward flux of FFA, and only when insulin is low can FFA leave adipose tissue. Insulin secretion is stimulated by high blood sugar which results from consuming carbohydrates. In humans, lipolysis is controlled through the balanced control of lipolytic B-adrenergic receptors and a 2A-adrenergic receptor-mediated antilipolysis. Fat cells have an important physiological role in maintaining triglyceride and free fatty acid levels, as well as determining insulin resistance. Abdominal fat has a different metabolic profile being more prone to induce insulin resistance. This explains to a large degree why central obesity is a marker of impaired glucose tolerance and is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Studies of female monkeys at Wake Forest University discovered that individuals suffering from higher stress have higher levels of visceral fat in their bodies. This suggests a possible cause and effect link between the two, wherein stress promotes the accumulation of visceral fat, 
which in turn causes hormonal and metabolic changes that contribute to heart disease and other health problems. Physiology Recent advances in biotechnology have allowed for the harvesting of adult stem cells from adipose tissue, allowing stimulation of tissue regrowth using a patient's own cells. In addition, Adipose-derived stem cells from both human and animals reportedly can be efficiently reprogrammed into induced pluripotent stem cells without the need for feeder cells. The use of a patient's own cells reduces the chance of tissue rejection and avoids ethical issues associated with the use of human embryonic stem cells. A growing body of evidence also suggests that different fat depots yield adipose-derived stem cells with different characteristics. These depot-dependent features include proliferation rate, immunophenotype, differentiation potential, gene expression, as well as sensitivity to hypoxic culture conditions. Brown Fat Adipose tissue is the greatest peripheral source of aromatase in both males and females, contributing to the production of estradiol. Adiponectin, resistin, plasminogen activator inhibitor 1, TNF-alpha, IL-6, leptin, estradiol. Adipose-derived hormones include Adipose tissues also secrete a type of cytokines called adipokines, which play a role in obesity-associated complications. Perivascular adipose tissue releases adipokines such as adiponectin that affect the contractile function of the vessels that they surround. Brown fat or brown adipose tissue is a specialized form of adipose tissue important for adaptive thermogenesis in humans and other mammals. Fat can generate heat by uncoupling the respiratory chain of oxidative phosphorylation within mitochondria through tissue-specific expression of uncoupling protein 1. Fat is primarily located around the neck and large blood vessels of the thorax where may effectively act in heat exchange. Bat is robustly activated upon cold exposure by the release of catecholamines from sympathetic nerves that results in UCP1 activation. Bat activation may also occur in response to overfeeding. UCP1 activity is stimulated by long-chain fatty acids that are produced subsequent to beta-adrenergic receptor activation. UCP1 is proposed to function as a fatty acid proton symporter, although the exact mechanism has yet to be elucidated. In contrast, UCP1 is inhibited by ADP, ADP, and GTP. Beige Fat and Watt Browning Genomics and Bioinformatics Tools to Study Browning Genetics Physical Properties Attempts to simulate this process pharmacologically have so far been unsuccessful. Techniques to manipulate the differentiation of brown fat could become a mechanism for weight loss therapy in the future, encouraging the growth of tissue with this specialized metabolism without inducing it in other organs. Until recently, brown adipose tissue was thought to be primarily limited to infants in humans but new evidence has now overturned that belief. Metabolically active tissue with temperature responses similar to brown adipose was first reported in the neck and trunk of some human adults in 2007, and the presence of brown adipose in human adults was later verified histologically in the same anatomical regions. Browning of Watt, also referred to as beijing, occurs when adipocytes within Watt depots develop features of BAT. Beige adipocytes take on a multilocular appearance and increase expression of uncoupling protein 1. In doing so, these normally energy-storing adipocytes become energy-releasing adipocytes. 
The calorie burning capacity of brown and beige fat has been extensively studied as research efforts focus on therapies targeted to treat obesity and diabetes. The drug 2,4-dinitrophenol, which also acts as a chemical uncoupler similarly to UCP1, was used for weight loss in the 1930s. However, it was quickly discontinued when excessive dosing led to adverse side effects including hyperthermia and death. Beta-3 agonists, like CL316,243, have also been developed and tested in humans. However, the use of such drugs has proven largely unsuccessful due to several challenges, including varying species receptor specificity and poor oral bioavailability. Cold is a primary regulator of BAT processes and induces Watt browning. Browning in response to chronic cold exposure has been well documented and is a reversible process. A study in mice demonstrated that cold-induced browning can be completely reversed in 21 days with measurable decreases in UCP1 seen within a 24-hour period. A study by Rosenwald et al. revealed that when the animals are re-exposed to a cold environment, the same adipocytes will adopt a beige phenotype, suggesting that beige adipocytes are retained. Transcriptional regulators, as well as a growing number of other factors, regulate the induction of beige fat. Four regulators of transcription are central to Watt Browning and serve as targets for many of the molecules known to influence this process. These include peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, PR domain containing 16, peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1 alpha, and early B cell factor 2. The list of molecules that influence browning has grown in direct proportion to the popularity of this topic and is constantly evolving as more knowledge is acquired. Among these molecules are irisin and fibroblast growth factor 21, which have been well studied and are believed to be important regulators of browning. Irisin is secreted from muscle in response to exercise and has been shown to increase browning by acting on beige preadipocytes. FGF21, a hormone secreted mainly by the liver, has garnered a great deal of interest after being identified as a potent stimulator of glucose uptake and a browning regulator through its effects on PGC1-alpha. It is increased in BAT during cold exposure and is thought to aid in resistance to diet-induced obesity FGF21 may also be secreted in response to exercise and a low-protein diet, although the latter has not been thoroughly investigated. Data from these studies suggest that environmental factors like diet and exercise may be important mediators of browning. Body Fat Meter Due to the complex nature of adipose tissue and a growing list of browning regulatory molecules, great potential exists for the use of bioinformatics tools to improve study within this field. Studies of Watt Browning have greatly benefited from advances in these techniques, as beige fat is rapidly gaining popularity as a therapeutic target for the treatment of obesity and diabetes. DNA microarray is a bioinformatics tool used to quantify expression levels of various genes simultaneously, and has been used extensively in the study of adipose tissue. One such study used microarray analysis in conjunction with Ingenuity IPA software to look at changes in Watt and Bat gene expression when mice were exposed to temperatures of 28 and 6 degrees Celsius. The most significantly up and down regulated genes were then identified and used for analysis of differentially expressed pathways. It was discovered that many of the pathways upregulated in Watt after cold exposure are also highly expressed in BAT, such as oxidative phosphorylation, fatty acid metabolism, and pyruvate metabolism. 
This suggests that some of the adipocytes switched to a beige phenotype at 6 degrees Celsius. Mossenbach et al. also used microarray analysis to demonstrate that insulin deficiency inhibits the differentiation of beige adipocytes but does not disturb their capacity for browning. These two studies demonstrate the potential for the use of microarray in the study of Watt browning. RNA sequencing is a powerful computational tool that allows for the quantification of RNA expression for all genes within a sample. Incorporating RNA-seq into Browning studies is of great value, as it offers better specificity, sensitivity, and a more comprehensive overview of gene expression than other methods. RNA-seq has been used in both human and mouse studies in an attempt to characterize beige adipocytes according to their gene expression profiles and to identify potential therapeutic molecules that may induce the beige phenotype. One such study used RNA-seq to compare gene expression profiles of Watt from wild-type mice and those overexpressing early B-cell factor II. Watt from the transgenic animals exhibited a brown fat gene program and had decreased Watt specific gene expression compared to the WT mice. Thus, EBF2 has been identified as a potential therapeutic molecule to induce Beijing. Animal Studies Gallery Chromatin immunoprecipitation with sequencing is a method used to identify protein binding sites on DNA and assess histone modifications. This tool has enabled examination of epigenetic regulation of browning and helps elucidate the mechanisms by which protein DNA interactions stimulate the differentiation of beige adipocytes. Studies observing the chromatin landscapes of beige adipocytes have found that adipogenesis of these cells results from the formation of cell-specific chromatin landscapes, which regulate the transcriptional program and, ultimately, control differentiation. Using ChIPSEC in conjunction with other tools, Recent studies have identified over 30 transcriptional and epigenetic factors that influence beige adipocyte development. The thrifty gene hypothesis states that in some populations the body would be more efficient at retaining fat in times of plenty, thereby endowing greater resistance to starvation in times of food scarcity. This hypothesis originally advanced in the context of glucose metabolism and insulin resistance, has been discredited by physical anthropologists, physiologists, and the original proponent of the idea himself with respect to that context, although according to its developer it remains as viable as when first advanced in other contexts. In 1995, Jeffrey Friedman, in his residency at the Rockefeller University, together with Rudolf Leibel, Douglas Coleman ETAL discovered the protein leptin that the genetically obese mouse lacked. Leptin is produced in the white adipose tissue and signals to the hypothalamus. When leptin levels drop, the body interprets this as a loss of energy, and hunger increases. Mice lacking this protein eat until they are four times their normal size. Leptin, however, plays a different role in diet-induced obesity in rodents and humans. Because adipocytes produce leptin, leptin levels are elevated in the obese. However, hunger remains, and when leptin levels drop due to weight loss hunger increases. The drop of leptin is better viewed as a starvation signal than the rise of leptin as a satiety signal. However, elevated leptin in obesity is known as leptin resistance. The changes that occur in the hypothalamus to result in leptin resistance in obesity are currently the focus of obesity research. Gene defects in the leptin gene are rare in human obesity. As of July, 2010, 
only 14 individuals from five families have been identified worldwide who carry a mutated OB gene two families of Pakistani origin living in the UK, one family living in Turkey, one in Egypt, and one in Austria and two other families have been found that carry a mutated OB receptor. Others have been identified as genetically partially deficient in leptin, and, in these individuals, leptin levels on the low end of the normal range can predict obesity. Several mutations of genes involving the melanocortins and their receptors have also been identified as causing obesity in a larger portion of the population than leptin mutations. In 2007, Researchers isolated the adipose gene, which those researchers hypothesize serves to keep animals lean during times of plenty. In that study, increased adipose gene activity was associated with slimmer animals. Although its discoverers dubbed this gene the adipose gene, it is not a gene responsible for creating adipose tissue. Preadipocytes are undifferentiated fibroblasts that can be stimulated to form adipocytes. Recent studies shed light into potential molecular mechanisms in the fate determination of preadipocytes although the exact lineage of adipocyte is still unclear. Adipose tissue has a density of 0.9 g/ml. Thus, a person with more adipose tissue will float more easily than a person of the same weight with more muscular tissue, since muscular tissue has a density of 1.06 g/ml. A body fat meter is a widely available tool used to measure the percentage of fat in the human body. Different meters use various methods to determine the body fat to weight ratio. They tend to underread body fat percentage. In contrast with clinical tools, one relatively inexpensive type of body fat meter uses the principle of bioelectrical impedance analysis in order to determine an individual's body fat percentage. To achieve this, the meter passes a small, harmless, electric current through the body and measures the resistance then uses information on the person's weight, height, age, and sex to calculate an approximate value for the person's body fat percentage. The calculation measures the total volume of water in the body, and estimates the percentage of fat based on this information. The result can fluctuate several percentage points depending on what has been eaten and how much water has been drunk before the analysis. Within the fat tissue of CCR2 deficient mice, there is an increased number of eosinophils, greater alternative macrophage activation, and a propensity towards type 2 cytokine expression. Furthermore, this effect was exaggerated when the mice became obese from a high fat diet. Diagrammatic sectional view of the skin White adipose tissue in paraffin section Electronic Instrument of Body Fat Meter